Welcome back friends. So this is layer two complete. We're going to start layer three. This piece is 18 by 18 inches. That's the size of canvas that we are working with. And yeah, let's see what we want to do. a little bit of this in. Should give me some of that. And a little bit of if it's intimidating to you to put paint directly on the canvas, I understand entirely. Um, I enjoy it because it kind of forces me to use what's there and I, it kind of creates a, a problem to solve. I have this much paint. What am I going to do with it? Where will I put it? Um, but if that feels a little overwhelming or just kind of, oof, too much commitment for you, that's cool. You can always put it on your palette and then bring it over in a way that feels a little more in line with your comfort of working. I've just been doing this a really long time, so I don't... Um, you know, the same things that might make you nervous if you just are starting aren't really things that necessarily make me nervous. So I'm just trying to be cognizant of what, what that might be in your case if you're starting out. So this teal here is very translucent. So if I don't mix it with something like this cream yellow color here, to make it a little more opaque, it's it's very see-through. So that's partially why I'm mixing it with this friend. This green that I put down is a high flow liquid. So as you'll see, it's very runny. Where these other ones are soft body paints, so they're really thick and they're not gonna give you that automatic dripping unless you add in a high flow to mix it with it or mix it in with water. If you add enough water and kind of brush it out, that will also give you that liquidy texture. So this is usually the layer, or starting at this layer, where if something kind of starts to stand out to me and look like something, I would start to fill it in, or kind of build out whatever I'm sort of noticing. I don't see anything yet, but maybe, you know, maybe you do. It's kind of like looking at the clouds when you're a kid. So if you if you see anything, let me know. This kind of reminds me of a snail shell or like a wave here, but that's about it. Um, let's bring in some white. This white that I'm bringing in is a fluid, so it's not super runny, but it's softer than the, like, these kind of paints.
And as always, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just painting. Just making shapes and kind of filling them things out and honestly just trying not to think too much about what I'm doing. <laughs> Which can kind of feel counterintuitive in a way to try to turn off your brain to do something. But I think the more you just let go and relax and just enjoy what you're doing, the, the better it turns out in my experience. The less pressure that I put on myself and less stress of having it need to be something or need to, um, you know, go a certain direction or have some sort of concept of success that I'm working towards. When I let all of that go, um, you know, you're left with just the painting and the, the freedom of that. And a little bit of fine line work. And then I think that'll probably be around the stopping point for layer three here. So again, this is a it's almost empty, too. And so I just filled it with some of my water to just reinvigorate the kind of what, whatever dregs of paint are left at the bottom. I'm using this really long brush, really long tip brush, because it lets you make, um, as long as it's wet and it has enough pigment on it, you can do these very fun, dainty lines that I'm a big fan of. They're going to be easier on dry canvas because it's wet. Um, the paint interacts with it more, so it kind of takes more off the brush and isn't quite as clean as when you go on the dry surface like this. But any of these fluid acrylics, high flow, high flow fluid acrylics, I love them because they will definitely help you get these really um, just very intricate and delicate brush strokes. So if that's something you enjoy and you've had trouble getting that to work for you in acrylic painting, it's probably because you're using a really thick body paint. And it's still possible with a thick body paint. It's just a lot trickier because you have to add enough water and matte medium to get it to that consistency where this color or this style of paint is already at consistency. So it's less challenging to do it this way. Ooh, I'm tripping color.
right, so I'm not sure what direction I'm going to want this to go. So, I don't know, maybe you see something going on here. There's certainly some interesting angles and shapes happening. I don't quite see anything yet, but that certainly does not mean that there isn't anything to be seen. So, if you see something, let me know. I'm very curious. It's always fun to see how other people's you know, imagination connects things or how their eyes, uh, you know, pull from reference images that are different than, you know, we all pull from a whole different catalog of visuals and experiences and art that we've absorbed over, over our lives and whatnot. There we go. All right, so that is our layer three. Thank you, friends, and I'm excited to see where this goes.